All right, let's take a look at another rational function here uh, in our um, look at concavity and points of inflection. Now let's pay attention to the denominator. Um, we realize that uh, here if we were to replace in for x positive or negative 2, uh, we'd be dividing by z 0. Um, so we want to make sure and be careful and be certain to put negative 2 and 2 uh, on our f double prime number line. Um, we have breaks in the graph at those x values. If you wanted to be specific about what type of points of discontinuity um, uh, were created at these x values, let's go ahead and, and, and plug in each of them to the function. So uh, everywhere I see x, replace it with negative 2, uh, square it, add 1, I'm going to get 5 divided by uh, 0, so that's a vertical asymptote. So if you want to be descriptive about the kind of point of discontinuity, that would that would certainly be a way to do it. Uh, plugging in negative 2, or positive 2, uh, we're going to get another vertical asymptote. And those are important to pay attention to because at vertical asymptotes, our concavity could change. We don't necessarily need a point of inflection for our concavity to change because that could certainly occur um, at uh, vertical asymptotes. And uh, just think about the reciprocal graph if you would. I mean, you have an idea of what that looks like. And um, the graph is uh, concave up and concave down on either side of the vertical asymptote there. So it is important to pay attention to the function and uh, where it's not defined and points of discontinuity. So um, we're exploring con concavity and points of inflection, so I'm just going to go ahead and give you the, the second derivative through the process of finding it, um, the second derivative, th using the quotient rule a couple of times. Yeah, so we're going to hope these, uh, these problems stick. I hope the letters don't just start, never start disappearing on us. All right, we've uh, accomplished getting the second derivative. Now let's figure out where the second derivative is equal to zero. I do our necessary cross products here, and it looks like we're going to get where the numerator is equal to zero. So if you see that shortcut, take it every time. Divide both sides by 10. Subtract a 4 and divide by 3. Bring in the square root. But I want you to notice that when you do bring in the square root, we'll have imaginary solutions. So um, from this, we can see that we have no um, x values at which the second derivative equals 0. All right, let's explore where the second derivative may not exist. Oh, does not exist. All right, and so in this case, we're going to set the second derivative equal to a does not exist fraction. Do cross products and see see what results. One over zero. Cross products. So you may see that this is uh, where the denominator equals zero. Bring in the cube root. When I bring in the cube root on both sides, I end up with this. Um, solving that, I get x equals positive negative two. Okay, but notice that uh, they're not even points on the regular gra graph. They're already present here as vertical asymptotes, so we have nothing else to add. Okay, now let's uh, do some test values. I don't know. I'm going to try, I guess, negative 3. Not into the original function, but to the second derivative to figure out what kind of positive negative signs to discuss concavity. Okay, um, negative 3. Well, the numerator is going to be positive. Negative 3 squared uh, gives 9. 9 minus 4 is a positive number cubed, so that result I think is going to be positive. So the graph is concave up from negative infinity up into its first vertical asymptote. It's positive. Uh, e, uh, 0 would be an easy value to try, so let's go ahead and plug in 0. Uh, the numerator is still going to be positive. 
the denominator is going to be um, neg negative, so that uh, is going to result in a negative output. So the graph is concave down. All right, let's see what happens here. So it's negative. And I'll just evaluate the second derivative of positive 3. Uh, that looks like it's, uh, again, going to be positive. Okay, and using this information, let's go ahead and report what we found about the function f. Not f prime, not f double prime, but just the function f. Concave up. Justify because f double prime is greater than zero. Which if you remember back what I said on example one is, we could also say because if f double prime is a positive value, that means f prime has got to be increasing. The function before the second derivative has to be going up uh, if, uh, the slope, if the slope is positive to that graph. f is concave down on negative 2 to 2 because f double prime at any of those x values is going to be negative, which means f prime is decreasing. Negative slopes, decreasing graph. What's the graph before the second derivative? The first derivative. So we have points of inflection. Okay, don't be tempted to say that you yes, we have two points of inflection. No, these aren't even points. Okay, those are vertical asymptotes. So um, f has no points of inflection, so I'm not even going to respond to that. Just the absence of anything there um, just supports that it has no points of inflection. Okay. All right, uh, and I encourage you guys to draw a graph of this function too. Uh, looking at the graph of this function, if you were to type it in your calculator, it has a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, same exponents. Uh, it has a y-intercept of negative 1 fourth, uh, has vertical asymptotes at negative 2 and positive 2. As in fact, on the calculator, the graph is doing this. Again, the, ver the horizontal asymptote is at 1, just a quick sketch. But you can see the graph is concave up from negative infinity to 1. Uh, if the whole graph is concave down, um, it's going to be parabolic shaped right in here. So the whole graph in between these next two, or these two vertical asymptotes, is uh, concave down. And then here we have um, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, uh, but the graph is concave up. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. The concavity, anyway. So use a, use a graph whenever possible to aid in your understanding of what we found. All right, and just a connection back again, like I was mentioning here, with the alternate justification. Now, again, if I'm working with the second derivative number line, likely my explanation, my justification is going to be a second derivative one. I'm getting us ready for graphs, interpreting graphs, and being aware that if the second derivative is positive, then that means that on an f prime graph, okay, the f prime graph is either increasing or decreasing depending upon the sign of the second derivative. So um, if the second derivative is positive, that tells us that f prime is increasing on this interval, decreasing on this interval, and if the slopes are positive, then f prime must again be increasing here. So if I wanted, um, you know, a, a, and these are vertical asymptotes here, if I wanted a justification, if I had a point of inflection, um, instead of using the second derivative justification, I could say that I have a point of inflection. Uh, when f prime changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, okay, as long as the points did exist um, where that, that change was occurring, where the direction was changing. Okay, so just an alternate example. So I hope you found these two examples helpful.